Hello, and welcome to Sutton Brain Hub. My name's Charlotte, and I'm going to be giving you an overview of Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, or CJD, which is a rare but fatal degenerative brain disorder. So, what are the different types of CJD? Sporadic CJD is the most common type. The precise cause is unclear, hence the term sporadic, but evidence suggests that a normal brain protein, called a prion, misfolds to create an abnormal protein. Variant CJD is the one that most people have heard of. The same scientific principle applies here, but this is likely to be caused by consuming infected material, such as meat from a cow that had bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or mad cow disease which is a similar prion disease to CJD. Familial CJD is a very rare genetic form where one of the genes encoding the normal prion protein carries a mutation that causes abnormal prions to form in the brain during adulthood. Iatrogenic CJD is where infection is accidentally spread from someone with CJD through medical or surgical treatment for example through a contaminated corneal transplant or through a blood transfusion. Again, this is very rare and nowadays steps are taken to minimise the risk of contamination during these procedures. So what is a prion? A prion is actually a normal structural component of the nervous system. However, it can become misfolded into an abnormal or diseased prion protein. These misfolded prion proteins can catalyse the conversion of normal prion proteins into abnormal ones in a chain reaction. The abnormal prion proteins accumulate in the brain and can cause irreversible damage. Macroscopically, the damage results in brain atrophy or wasting. Microscopically, the accumulation of abnormal prion proteins in the brain causes vacuolation in the grey matter. These holes that form give the brain a spongy appearance histologically, and this is why it's known as spongiform encephalopathy. Unfortunately, there is no treatment for CJD. So, as we touched on before, the underlying pathology in CJD is the neuronal loss which results in brain atrophy, astrocytic proliferation and cytoplasmic vacuoles in neurons and astrocytes which gives the brain the spongy appearance. The presentation of CJD is variable but symptoms are often rapidly progressive. Approximately one-third experience fatigue, sleep problems and reduced appetite. One-third have general neurological problems, including memory loss or dementia, behavioural changes and confusion. And the other one-third have more focal neurological signs, including cerebellar ataxia, aphasia, visual disturbances or motor weakness. In a patient presenting with these symptoms, it would be important to examine the cerebrospinal fluid to rule out infection as the cause. You must also rule out toxicity, for example with drugs or alcohol. The definitive diagnosis for CJD is with a brain biopsy, however this is usually done post-mortem. So that was our overview of Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, or CJD. Thanks for watching. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.